The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. I come in on the third hour of two fabulous hours here at, two, at TFNN. And uh, just a lot of information we've got out here. Why? Because there were so, as we were discussing on Monday, there are so many charts that are making leg D, E, or even F in the uh, indices or in the, in the key stocks. And my biggest concern was that so many of the and the NASDAQ, well, they're not necessarily all NASDAQ, but in the IBD 50, top 50 uh, stocks, and mostly in the top 20, actually, were making serious extensions to the upside that some kind of a pullback was necessary to contain the verticality, that parabolic up move in some of these stocks, because if they kept going like this, even for just another couple of days, there would be a chance of a really sharp pullback in those stocks. So this is a very a much needed and timely um, digestive phase, and I'm calling it that. Why? Because the weekly charts are still very strong. Uh, technically, as I was mentioning Monday, there is just nothing. We'll see what happens Friday. Uh, tomorrow's the last day. We'll see what happens by the end of the day tomorrow. But if you weigh the number of stocks that have already been consolidating against the stocks that are rising, and many have been rising when the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence of the slow stochastic, has been pulling back. What this is, and let me just give you some kind of a, uh, a visualization. If you have if you have a kite on a fixed string, when the wind dissipates, and the kite is at its, at its maximum, when the wind dissipates, there's a moment where the kite might just hold up a little longer, or it'll stay within a certain range. When the wind comes back again, all that can happen is that that kite will be held back by the length of the string unless you reel out more string. If it's a balloon, that's very different because it's not tethered to anything. And what will happen is that when the wind dissipates, if that balloon just momentarily stays up and then the wind comes back again, there's a chance that that balloon will go higher. If, in fact, the current is not strong enough or the warm air or the wind, uh, the gust, is not strong enough to push the balloon to higher levels, what will happen is that when the wind dissipates a second time or a third time, there's a good chance that that balloon can drop quite sharply. So, well, of course, that's the same thing with the kite, except the kite, unless you reel out the string, is not going to be able to go much higher than the upper oscillation uh, high. Now, what we're looking at is in, in, the, in the Dow itself, in the Dow Industrials, if you look at the chart that I'm showing here on Tiger, uh, Tiger TV, and that's uh, Tiger 1, but I am also archived in Tiger 11, so if you want to look at these shows afterwards, and then today I'm going to open up the charts. I'm really going to try to do this slowly as possible um, because I think it's very important for, for me at this particular time for you to be able to see uh, the, the, the chart formations that I'm looking at, but even more importantly, what parameters I'd be looking at, and certainly not just the parameters, but what is now the resistance and what is now the, the support. So in the Dow, we had a high on the 2nd of April, which took us in the monthly to a new uh, um, high bar, which is very important because it means that you cannot get a confirmation of a peak until the last day of May. That's how it works. If I, if in March that was the high, in April we have not we had not made a new high, then we would be looking at a potential peak in the monthly right now. So what this does is extend it. What does that mean? It means that in the overall spectrum we've pushed out by one month 
the following peak that could happen or the leg up. 13,297. 13, Let me just type that in. 13,297. Okay. So here in the Dow, if the Dow at any point in the next two weeks breaks above 13,297, I would have to say that probably we'd be looking at 13,330 to 13,340. Fifty, that would intimate to me that the correct correction is over um, to the downside, and that we were probably moving to the upside and raising the base of support. That's not to say you still couldn't have a choppy market, but you've raised the base of support. Now, on the downside, if in the next two days the Dow closes below twelve thousand nine hundred, I'd say twelve thousand nine fifty or so. That is going to be very important. Why? Because so far, ever since that breakout on the 13th of March to the 13,180 level, every pullback has just somehow held 13,000. 13,002 was the low of the 23rd of March. 13,032 was the low of the 29th. Now we've undercut the uh, March 29th low. We'll see by the end of the day if this accelerates to the downside. Now, I, I'll do a couple of things that are very important as well, and I'll get them, but let's just do the numbers. The, S the Dow is down 160 at 13,039. The S&P is down 16 at 1396. So in other words, in percentage terms, they're both about 1.2. Let me see. Yeah, Dow is down 1.22, and the S&P is down 1.20. Now, that's interesting because that means that the S&P is slightly stronger. I like to see about a 60, a, a 0.6 uh, percent differential between the Dow and the S&P with the S&P a little bit stronger. So that says to me, uh, the day is young. We've really got to look at a number of things, and we'll go through each one of those in turn. Now, if you look at the, so that's the, that's the Dow. The SPX.X, the S&P is down 17.20 at, at 1396. Now, the way I've counted this, this is perfect, because I was waiting for a leg D up in the S&P. The Dow has an alternate wave count. It's a little bit more complex than the Chapman wave. But this is almost certain. I, say, I would say certain because the day is not closed. I don't want to do that. But I do want to put a down arrow at the top here. Why? When we were looking at the Dow, I'm just going to do this because it was a thought of mine that was very important that I, I just overlooked. And that is, you see in the MACD, that's the reason why I wanted to look at the uh, the Tiger TV. If you look at the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, you want to look at the, the fast moving average, the yellow moving average there in the, in the MACD, moving average convergence divergence. And the red line is the slow moving average. Well, look how it deflected low, which was a tip off that if the move to 13,297 could not continue to a higher high, there was a very good chance that this would deflect this this fast moving average would deflect lower again and the stochastic never went above 80 percent in this rally that was a tip off and the on balance volume made a nice v-shaped turnaround so that says to me we've got a peak in the dow that is saying be careful if you break underneath 12,950s. Why? Because there isn't that much support going all the way down to 12,734. In other words, there are no little V-shapes on the left side. In the S&P, there's a little bit different chart. It was a much clearer chart. The S&P went to a peak D from the 1340.23. Remember, let me just explain quickly. In the Chapman wave, the objective is to find the mo most obvious lowest low. This is the, the easy way to do it. The most obvious lowest low bar, and that low bar, I call it the entire bar, I want the lowest wick of the bottom to create a little V, and that's where you say, okay, I've identified the lowest low bar, and there's a turnaround, and we should get a buy signal, and that buy signal should go to a buy mode, which goes peak A, peak B, peak C, and the buy mode, not a buy signal, but the buy mode should take you to a peak D. Well, there was an oval formation. We, we went up to the leg D. We've pulled back. And now, as far as I'm concerned, 
The S&P is vulnerable because the MACD and stochastic are still very weak at 73% in the stochastic, but for 80% are like below is suspect, certainly below 60, 63 to 60% is very negative. And that says if the S&P could break underneath 30, 91.56, the low of the 29th, if it closes underneath 1391, the very next level of support is 1386.87. Absolutely imperative that it holds above that. It can close, it can slide below it for a, a one day, but it's got to close back in and turn around to the upside. If it does not, then the weekly chart says 1376 will be major support. In the Dow, since I'm going to be taking this time to be as articulate as possible in terms of Price parameters, the Dow is 12,685, so that whole 12,700 to 12,685 level will be what we're looking at. Now let's look at the Qs. I'm not interested in the composite interest, uh, um, composite index. The Qs are what I'm looking at. At 67.15, it is now underneath the nine period exponential moving average. It is underneath this little green line here, which is the 14 period moving average. It is about to test the 20 period moving average, which is at 6687, 66.87, if it closes at the low of the day. Now, well, I like to always look at a bar that you're looking at. The candle in the time frame that pertains to whatever time frame you have up. And at this point, this is a daily chart. I will not talk about this if, as if it's 4 o'clock, 4.05. It is now 11.20, or about close to 11.20 um, in the uh, 11, 11.20 in, uh, this is... Wednesday. So Wednesday, the 4th of April, and uh, Eastern Time, so the day is young. Anything can happen. But look, the reason why I discussed this on, thir on, on Monday is I'm getting a divergence between the MACD and the st slow stochastic right there and right there. Was that I was concerned that there was... There was internal strength based on the weekly charts, but on the daily charts, we were about to get some kind of a pullback, and how we close underneath the nine-period exponential moving average, I'd have to say three out of four sessions is going to be absolutely imperative. Why? Because if the, if the, if the Qs, let's just look at the 120. Now, look at this. This is fascinating. This is the pattern in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, only available at uh, TFNN. Is a pattern I call a double top or a drop bu drop bucket formation. Chapter 22, slide 366. Look at this. It, the the Qs went to peak F in the 120 minute chart at 68.51 on the 28th of March at at 11:30. Pull back, made a cup formation. Tackle that same high, went to 68.55, just a little higher. Closed below it in what I call a, par a, a, a parallel wave count. Peak G slash C, because inside this you had a little A and a B. And then what happens in my rule of thumb for this particular technique, if you close at least a halfway from the, the lip high and the bottom of the cup, you are going to test the bottom. If you break and close underneath the low, which is 67.20, that you can have a one-to-one a -one decline. You've got to be careful there. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. We'll continue this. We'll go through currencies as well. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you seek to maximize your returns. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You were born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Dow is down 156. S&P is down 16. And I'm going through the different indices. Just wanted to show for those of you looking at Tiger TV, this here is what I show my subscribers every single day, the 120-minute chart. Usually it's the 10-minute plus the 120-minute E-mini S&P 500 futures chart. And if you look at this, look at the beautiful arch formation that went from 1380.5 um, on the 23rd of March at 10.30, all the way to the high of 1418.1490, uh, I think it was, yeah, 1419.75 high of the, uh, let's see, it was the 27th and 6th, at, that's 4.30 in the afternoon. Then what happens is it reverses, comes back down in the left side price time match, but it didn't make that. It held above the 1380.50 low. It went to 1386, made a beautiful arch formation up to the high, I didn't type that in, of 1417.75, on the twenty on the on the second fourteen fourteen seventeen point twenty five and it's per, a pull back in almost a perfect left side right side time price match that takes you to um today at uh, later in the day to test the 1386.25 level if it continues in this arch formation. So I thought I'd just show you that. And look at, look at the symmetry of the left side, right side. And in fact, it's just been beautiful symmetry in this all the way through with the cup formations, now the arch formations. Now, that's very interesting because if we look at it in the context of the cues, there's the cup formation, the inversion of that. Now what we've done is we've broken... The queues have broken below 67.20 to a low today of 67.04. That means that once you break under it, you, the price often tries to get back into the uh, back into the 
just let me do this give me one second okay uh, I just need to ask are you there there you go uh, if it breaks if it breaks underneath that 6720 level that would say that there's a chance that it would try to get back into the cup just like in the arch formation tries to get back into the arch and then if it slides back and retests if it cannot hold the low of this bar here that's going to be very negative and then the next level of support in the queues will be 6656 so that's the queues now this is going to be interesting i want to go straight to the tlt i'll go to gold you know what i i i've not been positive on gold for a while i didn't actually get into the um I didn't get into the DZZ I was going to. I just never did it, um, which is a pity. Now, the TLT, this is very important. That's the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund. It's only up 0.99. Bonds, let me just double-check here. Bonds are up um, 14, 30 seconds. So something is absolutely going on. I mentioned this the other day, that there is there is... You know, when people say it's different, everyone always chuckles and says, um, uh, yeah, the moment you say it's different, it's not different. But so far, there is a difference. This is one of the very few times in years, certainly many, many months, that the money has not migrated from bonds into stocks or stocks into bonds in a counterpoint. This is the first time, in fact, that the TLTs acted so weakly in pullbacks in the Dow or, or, or sharp moves to the downside. I have to watch this really closely because it's saying, and this is the contradiction I'm looking at, that the TLT right now should be up a dollar thirty-five. It should at least be testing the 200 period moving average at 112.21 instead of at 111.57 up 99 cents. In fact, the pullback yesterday was really, that was vicious. And that takes me to the issue that I was speaking about the other day. You remember on Monday I was talking about, I said I'm a little concerned. I think that the housing sector has gone as much as it can to the upside in this particular phase of the buy mode in the daily. Possibly even the weekly because the HGX has gone from 73.65 to 132 point 38 uh, the week of the 16th of March and what do I see the very next week the high is around number 132.00 that says be careful because if the nine period moving average support which is right at now at 123.04 actually it's about 123.06 if that if if the this week that's tomorrow if the HGX index closes below it'll be the first close below the nine period moving average since the weekly broke out the second week of, of uh, the week of the second of December, so I want you to put that into the picture. That means that the upside, 126.55 is at 123.04 down, 2.54 right now. That's going to be very important to try to test and break above in the next week. Because if it cannot, we're looking at a test of the low bar on the two uh, 114.91. That is, that is six. That's nine points. So that's the candle that I'd be looking at if they were to close sharply lower next week. So, okay, we're going to go through the other indices straight off this. Don't forget today's Larry Pesavent today, and Kate will be doing it. Hi, folks. Turns out my best student became my best teacher. Steve Rhodes absolutely raised my standards, and I'll guarantee he'll raise yards. Thanks, Tom. What I've learned is that if you want more, you must become more, and that transformation, folks, that occurs the moment you decide to become a master. Now, the quickest way to mastery is through immersion, and for two solid days in Denver, Boston, and Tampa, I'll create a new standard of wealth for those few trader investors who have a burning desire to succeed. At my Master Trader course, I'll teach you how to create the ultimate money machine. These are the best kept secrets in the business roadblocks folks dabblers give up when they first appear stressors last just a little bit longer but masters expect roadblocks and achieve extraordinary results when they bust right through them i have all the benefit of knowing the type of wealth creation that i can generate for you you don't that's why i'm making this unconditional money back guarantee if for any reason you're not satisfied with my master trader course i'll refund every penny that's right i take all the risk and you get all the benefit go to the homepage at tfn.com and sign up today 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach with short-term trading opportunities available including binary options expiring each hour the market is open nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market don't let this trading opportunity pass you by open your account today by clicking on the nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com nadex a better way to trade what type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are back, and Kate Stalter will be doing Larry's show uh, straight off to this. And, uh, of course, I will not be back until Monday because um, it's uh, Easter Good Friday, and I certainly want to wish everyone a happy Easter and, and, and uh, a happy Passover. And let's go straight back to this. What I'm talking about here is if if... If I'm looking at the different indices, there, if I'm looking at the different sectors, if I'm looking at stocks within sectors, there are still a handful of stocks that are still really strong, but there are more that are starting to be quite weak. Now, let me show you something. We had a, a, a call recently, um, and I looked at the euro-dollar, the EUR-USD currency pair, the Forex traded vehicle, and it had made what I called a double top and a peak C1 and just a fractionally lower high bar underneath the 200 period exponential moving average. But because of the stochastic looking as if it was about to turn down, what I said is I am going to call this peak C1 and peak C. I discussed C2. I discussed this in my CD introducing the Chaff Wave methodology. And what it says is that if it wasn't for just a fractional new high, Everything about the chart said it's what I would expect at a peak D. And the irony of it is that very often you get the peak C1, C2 in a sharp pullback. And later on, it actually does go and make a peak D. But you, do, you, you cannot think that way. You have to think, I want to be as conservative as possible. That's what the, the Chapman Wave is trying to do, to show you. The, you can always go back and correct a letter because you're 
prime objective is to be in the right letter for the next peak or trough. The Chapman wave is the, is the waveform that never sleeps. Every single movement has a consequence, and everything is is uh, is uh, gauged and calculated like a peak A, peak C, or a trough A, trough C, or trough B, trough C. Now what we're looking at, so it makes C1, C2 on the uh, 29th of Feb, and it plunges from the 1.348 uh, area down to the low of 1.30. Uh, now what's important is it rallies back up in a peak A, peak B, peak C. It goes to 1.33850. Remember I was talking about this on Monday. And I said there's a chance that we're going to make another because of the, the failure, the right shoulder failure in the stochastic. We're going to make another peak C1, C2 failure. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we've done on the 2nd of uh, April. It failed to get to the 1.38. 338, it went to 1.337, 9, and that said, be careful, because if you close under the 9 EMA with a stochastic so we can the MACD about to turn down, be careful, and that's exactly what we've got. So the euro, the euro-US dollar currency pair right now is at 1.313. I see it testing 1.3003 for the low of the 15th. If it closes under that, the next level is 1.29737, the low of the 16th. There is a time price consequence to this, and it says we've had pretty much equal moves. Um, I'm just going to do this quickly. So there's one. There's two. I'll change the color so that you can see. I'll call that red. And now we've got another one, and I'm going to call this, give it another color. There you are. Let's go to the right there. Now that says... By about the 9th of April, if this if this downtrend continues, we should be testing, uh, it probably could be before that, but by the 9th, you should be testing the 1.30. Now, let's go to the, um, the dollar, DXY. So the dollar at this particular point is making its second W formation. And this second W formation, like an M pattern, also has consequences. And it gives you very specific uh, uh, levels to be looking at. As it stands right now, the dollar's up 43 cents. That's not a big deal. In fact, it's kind of pathetic. But the dollar is definitely trying to rally. And this rally must take it close above the high of the 22nd, 79.95. Just four cents away. It should do that today. And if it does that, then the left side high of 80.74, if it's taken out in this move, will start leg C to the upside. Now, most importantly, if you look at the weekly, the monthly, this is the weekly chart that I'm looking at. I'm sorry, that was the daily chart. Now we're going to go to the weekly chart. The weekly chart is making something very different. This is basically a cup and handle, not a chap wave cup and ladle, but a cup and handle pattern. Yes, you could also call it an inverted head and shoulders, but I prefer right now to be thinking of it as a potential cup and handle, and that says that makes it the big cup formation, and then the 8178 level, which is really far away for the dollar, two points for the dollar seems to be a lifetime if it does it very quickly. That's going to be saying that the euro goes down sharply and that the level to watch is 81.78. Close above 81.78, that'll be the second time only in the past year, or uh, more than a year since last. No, it hasn't even been there. You have to go to close above that 81.78 level. You have to go back to September of 2010. Can it happen? Well, this is what I'm looking at. The dollar has a habit of, this. you see this slow stochastic, the little W formation? I like that, except the fast-moving average is not moving up. If that fast-moving average is not moving up, it means the look-back period is saying, so far there isn't conf confirming strength in the weekly chart. Also, the MACD, slow slow uh, this red line the slow moving average look at the yellow line with this little w formation for me that has to cross the the fast moving average has to cross above 0.67 and the histogram has not yet gone positive so that says to me i have to still consider that the doubt that the general market is in a consolidation not the start of a bear market just a consolidation 
and I have to just wait for the evidence to play out. And and the TLT would, I wouldn't say con- would confirm it, but the reason why I brought the housing sector is that if mortgage rates are going to really jump sharply higher, that's going to be a very bad sign for the housing market because part of it is people are looking for deals and yep there are reports right now that there's price um, uh, uh, um, uh, they, they're chasing price and that's uh, that's really that's very important to a housing market what it says is as I said to my wife the other day, that says we don't have to do any fixing up which we have been doing for about a year or so already, getting the house just nice and all, always like to have it ready for sale in case. But the interesting thing is when people chase the price, they prepare to overlook all these little things. When nobody shows up at your door, they say, I want that fixed and that has to be moved. And yep, they got to move. And that flower, oh, and that tree, and every single thing becomes an issue. So that says to me, this is still a consolidation. And until the dollar really spirals higher and, and bonds actually show money is coming out of the stock market into bonds. I'm looking at this as, and if we did go short uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the market, but I, I, I've made it a wise stop for now because I need to see where the day closes. I do believe we need to pull back, but man, there are so many stocks that are just impervious to this down move that is quite striking so now the only thing left we've got the two things left we want to look at um usd jpy that was the uh that was the dollar uh, japanese yen and what we're looking at here is yep a nice consolidation holding the nine period exponential moving average at 81.50 it's at 82.643 if the dollar japanese yen currency pair is able to close above 83.61 there's a real good chance it's not only going to tackle the 82.173 high of the 16th yeah that was the high but it could in fact start leg c up fairly soon um now this is what i also wanted to do and to me this is kind of important i wanted to go let me just lean over get to my printer and get this thing out yeah okay i wanted i started doing this the other day remember we spoke about apple well in the chapter wave what you want to do is you want to you always want to be in the correct waveform and sometimes you have to re-notate certain peaks because certain things happen, and you just want to be on the ball to know the last peak you've notated, the last letter or the last trough is the one that you can rely on. Um, so now look at this. Apple has pulled back seven dollars to six twenty two. There is a peak D. It's an interesting thing because in my hundred and twenty minute chart, um I there's no way I could count it without breaking rules and I just I do not break rules in the chat wave. I might go to a, a, a subsidiary rule, but it's still a rule. I just won't make one up because when you start making up rules and you form fit whatever technique it is, believe me, you're in trouble. So what happened is the low of 602.50 on the 21st of March in Apple was broken just by a tad, 597.94. That essentially says you've got to restart a buy mode. Well, this buy mode said you've gone to a peak B, and if you hold, um, I'm going to give you a level right now. If you hold above 610, that's very far down. But if you hold above 610, there's a chance you could have one more spike to start a leg C and then a D in the 120 minute chart, which would probably be like leg E. In, in Apple, that's the positive side. On the downside, because the 120 minute chart, when you're looking at a tide, your little pool on the side is, is, that can be, that's irrelevant. The bigger tide now says that in the daily chart, you see that you went to, in my charts here, let me open it up, you see the way Apple went to a new high at 632.21 on the third yesterday? Look! You didn't get confirmation in the technicals. The technicals are way lower than at the previous high of 621.45 a week ago, uh, four or five days ago. So that says to me, be careful. Apple might go a little higher, but you're starting to see some technical weakness. It says be careful, and that's the reason why I think the queues, I'm watching the queues very closely. Now, there's another a- aspect to this whole thing. Let's look at the IWM. If you look at the IWM, there was a peak uh, in the 120-minute peak G. The, the daily has made a peak 
D top at 64, uh, 84, 66. Now what's really important about this particular pattern that I'm looking at, if the IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, closes under 81.25, it negates that circle formation that I've got there, and you will get an arch formation. And that arch formation says, look to the left side for support. And unfortunately, the support at this particular point is way down at 78.41 if you look at troughs. But if you look at candles, the wick of the 8th, 8th of March, the high of 80 points, it opens at round number 80, goes to 80.69, closes at 79.35. That whole area, that would be major support. Now, the other thing is in the weekly chart, the technicals are just starting to turn down. They're not negative, but they're turning down because the stochastic's still at 87% and the MACD is still holding very well. But both the fast-moving averages have turned down quite sharply. Now, this is the pattern. In the falling X formation in the weekly chart of the IWM, you can break above it. That's really positive. But if you start to get back underneath that downtrend line, that's a negative and says be careful because you could make an arch formation. And that arch formation in the IWM confirms what I was saying, a break below 81, say, and what is the 9 period moving average? 81.50 would target the low of the 16th of 81.05. So that's what I'm looking at. Monthly charts are still really strong in almost all these indices. Now, we also wanted to look at them. You just swing across. Okay. So because, because I won't be back until Friday with the holiday and all, um, let me go through. I, I will not take any, any calls. I'm going to take just run these through. I wanted to look at and show you why I'm looking at a period of digestion coming up here. And that is a period that says you just got to take time off. So RGR, which is Sturm, Sturm Ruger and Company, uh, uh, this is a German uh, gun maker, uh, not a, it's got a German name, but it is um, a gun manufacturer and ammunition. It made a peak E today. It's at 5130. Technicals are still very good, and I suspect if it pulls back, the level to watch is at 51.27, will be 49.35. That's going to be key in the next week. That is on the top of IBD's uh, top um, 50. A Apple is next. I did Apple, so Apple, remember the, the, the levels I'm watching are, if Apple breaks, closes under 612, the nine-period exponential moving average, then that whole six. 12 to 610 area is really critical. I haven't really got time now to talk about the gaps. Well, maybe I will find time. But there are so many stocks. Ga Apple's got a gap at five, 575.40 was the low of the 14th and 568.18 on the 13th. That will be filled at some point. When is the question? Um, I, I treat gaps very, very respectfully. But gaps don't have to be filled. That have to be filled for years. We've got gaps from the low of 2009. Uh, they are so far below uh, that you have to think it's going to take a long time before they ever get filled. They will get filled at some point, but it can take years. Um, but you do look at specific gaps. So that a gap means nothing. In this case, the gap of 670 or 575 means nothing until you start to break down. If Apple closes in the next two weeks below 597.94, that gap starts to look very enticing. Okay, we'll be back and we'll look at uh, Alexion, GNC, Lulu, Cause, Priceline, a couple of others in the IVD list. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 152, S&P's down 60. Don't forget, Kate Stolter's coming up next. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today.
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 thousand ounces per year at a cash cost of only four hundred and fifty dollars per ounce the hollister mine in nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only 527 dollars per ounce great basin gold is cash flow positive and trades on the toronto and new york stock exchanges under the symbol gbg Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician, hour 149 down, in the, uh, down 16 in the S&P. Now, let's continue. The XLF made a double top at 1601 and then 15.91 for like a peak C1, C2. But... It's holding really well at this particular point. If the XLF starts to crack 15.47 support, that's the low of the 23rd, you have no choice but to expect that the 15.18 level in the weekly uh, nine-period moving average support, that, that could be tested. But the weekly is still holding extremely well, and that's important. The monthly is, is looking great. So uh, did the monthly, so that was 1601. Okay, the monthly is making peak A if the entire April it doesn't go above 16.01, if it doesn't go to 1602. So I want you to mention that, and now we can go on. So L A L X N Alexion, been a fantastic stock. Making a potential right shoulder failure with the stochastic and the MACD right here at 92.60, 92.24, down to dollar sixty-one. Having made a peak D top at 95.01, and a possible Doji peak F top in the weekly. But I've got an F slash B because there's nothing technically wrong. And the monthly chart is just uh, what a great example of, of 
of a, of the nine period moving average being support in the monthly. So the level to watch is if Alexion breaks ninety in the next two three days, the up channel support line is going to be absolutely imperative to hold around about eighty nine. Yeah, right about that ninety level. So if we're close under under that, the wick of the twenty eighth of March is going to be tested at eighty seven oh three. Here we go. Uh, GNC. I'm just running. This is the list that that came out there from the printer. GNC. I've got this as maybe an instant restart, but at 35.66 GMC holdings uh, is at a down 42 cents. It, if it, in both cases, in all the cases I'm talking about, if new highs are made, that's really positive. But I'm just talking about downside support. So if the downside, this wick, like the Roman candle that was made yesterday on the third of low of 35.17, if Alex, if G, G N for Nancy C. Uh, uh, starts to go tomorrow into the 35.30 area, then the wick will be tested and 35.04 will be the key support in the um, daily for the nine period exponential moving average support. Closes under that and we'll be looking at a two weeks time test of 34.11. Looking at the uh, Lulu so how am I doing on time? I've got time. Lulu, Lululemon, went to a new high, 76.66. This is amazing. 76.72, and everyone's talking recession, etc. How can it be a recession when the RTH has been going to all-time highs and the these Lululemons, nobody, I mean, come on, Lululemon Athletica, bad times. You are, you would not see these stocks, these these. these, these um, these uh, apparel clothing places, you wouldn't see this kind of price. So, I uh, made a high yesterday of 76.72. If it clears 77, that's really positive. And today's only down a dollar. So, if by tomorrow afternoon, Lululemon has broken below uh, 74.82, the nine period moving average, closes under that. Then the, the the doji candle of the second will be the test. Seventy three ninety two will be the big test. Uh, let's go. We've got a time for what? Cause. I'd love to look at cause. I'm sure I'm going to hear music any moment now. And of course, you know that Kate Stalter will be going through. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are the same names because she she oh she looks at the small caps. So cause is one of them. Cause is uh, retail apparel stores, and this is Michael Cause Holdings is trading at forty seven fifteen, up fourteen cents, holding really well. But it is under the previous high of uh, fifty point sixty nine. If cause breaks below forty forty five fifty in the next two days, it'll retest the low forty four forty six. So far, it's holding very well. Peak C in the in the weekly Basil Chapman. I'll be back on Monday. Have a fantastic week and a, and a tremendous uh, uh, Friday for everyone. And don't forget, my service is the opening call. Look at the front page. And as we read it, go out, M is... Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stay...